We have Concord head coach Justice. In your rookie season, you claimed the West Virginia Conference Championship. How special was that for you, and what do you need to do to be the first repeat champion since Shepard? Well, it was very special. Um, I mean, a lot of that was I inherited a great situation. I mean, Mike Keller left a, a great situation with a lot of great players, and it takes great players to win a championship, and I, I was fortunate enough that I had enough of those last season. As far as repeating next year, that, that's going to be a very daunting, tough challenge. Um, a challenge I think our guys are up to, uh, but again, we weren't picked first preseason, so so we're going to have some hurdles to overcome. I mean, she Shepard's obvious when Shepard is returning that, that great defense they have, and and they do a lot of great things offensively. And then, then you have emergence of Charleston, where they came up through the league, and West Virginia Wesleyan was the most prolific offense in the league last year. So there's a lot of hurdles, a lot of challenges. The biggest thing for our guys is we have to take every game one week at a time. How does the experience of winning the conference title last season and going to the playoffs help this year's team? I think it gives them the maturity. I think I think it changes their mindset. Uh, last year our mindset was get to the top, get to the crown. And, and now once we've got that, gotten there, we have to take that success and keep thriving on it. Uh, People view success two ways. They either, they either get it and they get complacent and look back on it, or they get it and they want more of it. And hopefully our guys want more of that success. You open with three straight home games this season, including two tough ones against Lenore Ryan and Winston-Salem. Uh, talk about those games and what you'll have to do differently to start out better than Concord did last year. Well, uh, uh, you tell me. Uh, Lenore Ryan's a, a great team. They won the SAC Conference last year. They have that triple option attack, which is so different than what anyone else gets to see uh, anymore. So it's going to be difficult just controlling that offense. And then last year, we, we really didn't find ourselves offensively early, early in the year. So we're going to have to we're going to have to move the ball offensively and give that defense some help. Um, Winston Salem State. I mean, not many people really handled those guys last year. So the good news is they lost a lot of people. Uh, the bad news is they still were a national semifinalist team and they're defending the CIAA champ. So that's going to be a little challenge, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we got to worry about Lenore Ryan first. And then, and then not to mention, you got Charleston in the third game. So, so we, we have a, a good little string of opponents right off the bat. You returned a lot of talent on offense, uh, but you also lost your running back. How will you alter your offense to continue to have a high powered attack? Well, the good news is you have your quarterback back. Zach Gross, he's a great, great quarterback. He's been one of the better quarterbacks in this league. Uh, we're fortunate we still have him. So much of football is, is a quarterback-driven league, and uh, you see that two years ago with the Medro, last year with the with the kid at, at Wesleyan. So, so hopefully Grossi can have a year like those guys had, and we'll be okay. Um, as far as replacing a running back like Brian Kennedy, it's gonna be hard to. Um, we have some guys and. Chris Rodriguez, Andrew Gondor, and some freshmen we brought in that we think can kind of carry that load. But it's probably going to be more tailback by committee than having that one spotlight guy like some, some people like Charleston have. You talked a little bit about Grassi and returning as a, a key piece of the offense. Talk about your receiving core since they have such a dynamic quarterback to try to deliver the ball. Well, last year, last year I didn't even know who our wideouts were going to be. This year I think we got more of a handle on that. Um, the, the, the guy that had the biggest year for us last year was Ryan Stewart. He was a uh, he was one of the top freshman wilds in the league. Had ten touchdowns last year as a freshman. So he's a he's a dynamic guy who can who's that big play guy that you like to go to. Another guy who had a lot of catches, Randall Hawkins. He uh, he probably led our team in catches and then was a was a steady target for Zach to go to. And then you have a, a pickup of, of Vance Ponder from Western Michigan, who's a guy that. And really go over the top and get it. So, so hopefully those three guys with with a running game we'll put together can really help help Zach out. Okay, defensively you return a, a strong core of starters from last year. Uh, you guys had 21 interceptions and 13 fumble recoveries last year. Uh, what's the mindset of your defense for this season? Well, hopefully it's the same. We can get those numbers. Um, you know what? It's 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 so much of a pressure base. We we want to keep the pressure on. on on both sides of the ball. We always want to be in attack mode. Um, we always want to go after teams. Uh, defensively, I mean, with Josh Miller in the middle, it gives gives a linebacker like Jake Lilly to have a lot of flexibility to, to make the tackle because he contains so many blockers up front. Um, you lose a guy like Aaron Martinez in the secondary, which 
which hurt, which hurts, but you have the acquisition of Devon Marion who comes back into the lineup after he had to sit out last season. And then you have a guy like Riyad Richardson and Nate Pollard at corner. Those guys those guys help provide some of those turnovers. So so hopefully we're very much of a take care of the ball, get the ball philosophy on, on the team. So those turnovers help win games and if we didn't have those turnover numbers last year we wouldn't have been where we were at the end of the year. Uh, an area that's not usually talked about much, but where Concord was solid last year was in special teams. How, what do you expect this year out of that unit? Well, I, the, the way I view special teams is let's not lose the game for special teams. Now, if we get a big play, that's great, but I would rather let's just limit the games and let the offense and defense take care of the ball. But the good news is, is that last year we didn't have a consistent field goal kicker. Now we're bringing in two guys we think that will give us more consistency with that. Uh, as far as the punting game is concerned, you have Brad Cox, who's been a three-year starter for us and one of the top punters in the league. So we feel like we're more solid with that. We feel we're getting a better crew of athletes on the team. So that way you're better on the coverage teams. You're better in the return game. And hopefully we, we can continue to build on last year's success. Okay, just give us some uh, general thoughts on the rest of the, rest of the West Virginia Conference and uh, where you think it's going to pan out for this season. Well, hopefully it pans out Concord's on top, but uh, everyone's going to hope that. Everyone's going to want that. Everyone's going to expect that. Uh, just going through the league, I mean, Charleston was the, the up-and-comer late, late in the year last year. Or what, they went four of their last five games, I believe, and probably had the top tailback in the league in Jordan Roberts. So they're, they're, a, great, they're a great, tough opponent. Um, West Virginia State is always, they've got the Phillips kid at quarterback. They're always a team that scares you because they have some talent and they can do some things with that guy in place. Uh, Seton Hill is a team that, that you don't really, you never really know about them. We're, we're, in a southern, we're probably the southernmost team, they're the northernmost team, so I hear about them the least. So, so you never do know what's going on at Seton Hill. They, they always, they just won the league, what, or they were into the playoffs four years ago, I believe. So, so they're a team that can always sneak up on you. And then you have Shepard who is who's kind of the, the standard of what everyone else in the league is trying to become. Um, West Liberty, who was nationally one of the best offenses in the nation just a season ago, so you can't forget about them. And, and of course, they're going to take a step back after losing what they lost last season. Uh, Fairmont State's up-and-coming team. I know Mike's expecting his best team to date there. And then, uh, and then Wesleyan's going to be good as well. Wesleyan has, I mean, they lost their quarterback, lost some wideouts, but they still got the same coaches. They still got a lot of players in that offense and defense to continue their success. And then, and then Glenville, the team that, that, that are our only loss in the conference last year, we had to find out a way to beat those guys. So the, the good news is, is that I feel that since I came in the league four, four seasons ago, the conference has gotten steadily better every single year. And a lot of the reason is for the Shepherds going to the national semifinals, for the West Liberties having top offenses in the nation, for Wesleyan having top offenses in the nation. Those other teams in the league, they have to compete against those guys on a yearly basis, so everyone else is kind of picking up their game, and, and it's great to see for us on a national level. All right, thanks a lot, Coach.